Okay, so we're going to continue building this site using my time-tested techniques for making class tags for HTML5 tags. Class tags, if used the right way, will make your site very flexible. So let's get started here. I'm going to save this file as version 3. So we're going to version 2, so we're just going to continue on with our training here. So this is going to be version 3. Now, here's my objective here. I want to create a site that has flexibility which means I don't want to put floats and colors inside the div tag or inside the actual HTML5 tags. As an example, I don't want to colorize the header tag and the nav tag physically inside the tag itself. I want to do that inside of a class tag. Class tags will be very flexible to make changes to my page because eventually I'm going to take the same page and save as the about page, save as the products page save as the price page, save as the contact page, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So eventually, when this becomes a final page, these internal style sheets are going to be moved to an external style sheet. Now, very important step here. There's a lot of videos out there that are telling people to create a document from scratch and tie it to an external style sheet. Bad idea, bad technique. What that does, what that does, you can have different versions of your page. Version 1, version 2, version 3, if it's tied to the same external style sheet. So when developing a site from scratch, the style should be internal to that document. Then, once the client approves it prior to launching, you then want to move those rules to an external style sheet, which this video series is going to cover, by the way. So stay tuned. Okay. So we're going to create a series of class tags for color and class tags for floats. So here's how we do this. There's nothing to select. I'm gonna come down here to my uh, new CSS rule and I'm gonna make a series of class tags. Now, if it's simpler for you guys, if you select class, that you don't have to put the dot in. If you physically select class here, Dreamweaver puts the dot for you. If you come down here to compound, you have to put the dot in for you, for yourself. So either way it works. If you select class tag, you don't have to put in the dot. Dreamweaver puts in the dot for you. So just understand something. Class tags begin with a period. Class tags are defined, then class tags are assigned. So we're going to come up with a series of background colors. Background colors for our site. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to say class. We have class tag selected. So we'll simply say BG for BG color, O-N-E. Or if you want to make this really simple, we can call this background color one. So classes are defined, then classes are assigned. So we're going to call this BG color one. Now, since we're going to work with a series of dark colors, we're going to make our type white. And I'm going to come over here and pick a series of colors. Okay, I'm going to pick a series of colors here. I'm going to pick this particular color. This is going to be the theme of our site, this orange color. So I'm going to hit OK. So class tag should appear after the HTML tags, but before the wrapper tag. So notice that it says period BG because Dreamweaver put the period in because I used the class tag function of the CSS rules. OK. Now, very important step here. I don't want to reinvent the wheel here. So I'm going to take this rule we just created, hold down the control key, Macintosh, or right-click Windows, and we're going to duplicate this, okay? Now, if you looked at previous videos of mine, I'm not a big fan of reinventing the wheel here. So I'm simply going to say, I'm going to cut that, command X cut. I'm going to call this command X cut, con command V, paste, cut, paste, control, Macintosh, I'm sorry, control Windows, cut, paste. I did that so I'd have to retype BG. We're going to call this BG2 and hit the return key. Then I'm going to duplicate 2, duplicate 2, and I'm going to say paste 3. Production techniques, guys. The oldest trick in the book, cut paste. Let the software work for you instead of the software working you. Okay, so let's duplicate that. Control key, click, paste 4. We're going to come up with a total of five background colors. Okay, control key, click, paste, 
five, the background five. Okay, now make a change, save a change. Now, for all practical purposes, these colors are exactly the same color because I duplicated them. But now I want to take this color here. I can either change the color from here or I can change the color from double clicking. I'll just simply double click. So this color is going to be a lighter version of this color. So I'm going to pick my color wheel. Now, I want to mention something. I'm on Macintosh. The Windows interface for color picker is slightly different. You're going to have to know your system to do this. But on Macintosh, I can just select the color, and I'm going to pick a lighter version of this color. So I'm going to take this wheel and drag it closer to the center. Here's my lighter version of my color. Now, if it's a lighter version, I probably would make my type color darker. White's not going to look good on that. We're going to make our type color black. Okay, this is for BG2, background 2. Okay, so that's done. Double click 3. Now, I want 3 background color to be a darker version of this. So I'm going to simply select this slider and move this down so it's a darker version of this color. So that's color 3. Make a change, save a change. Color 4, keep in mind, 4 and 5 are the same as 1 because I duplicated. Double click 4, go to my background color. We're going to make this the opposite color. This way I can have contrasting colors. So if this is where the color lives, up here on the top right, and the opposite color is over here. This is the opposite color or contrasting color. Very simple to do. So this is an opposite color. Now for background 5, double click. We want to make that the opposite of a version of the opposite color. So I'm going to select the same color again. Go back to here. So before we're inside this color range, we're simply going to drag that closer to the center. So that's going to be a lighter version of the opposite color. So this opposite color, I'm going to go to type and I'm going to change this to black because white's not going to look good too good on that color. Okay, make a change, save a change. So I created the rules for class tags. Class tags are defined, then class tags are assigned. I define what the class does, and I assign it to something. So as an example, I could assign any of these tags, any of these rules rather, to any tag. I'm going to select the header tag. Select the header tag. Don't select the header. Select the header tag based on these choices. These are my choices down here. I'm going to pick this background too. Background 2 will now be my header tags background for this particular page. Once I say this as the about page and the products page, that color can be different because I assign the color inside of a class tag, not inside the actual header tag itself. If you put color inside the header tag itself, then it's the same color on every single page. This class tag technique creates flexibility. Okay, now let's take this one step further. Let's also create class tags for our floats, for our float left, float right. So how do we do that? We go down here to the bottom right and we make new CSS rule. Okay, let's select class. If I select class, it will put the period there for you. If you select compound, let's do it this way. Let's make a compound from scratch. I have to then put the class tag in myself by hitting the period. Okay, so we're going to call this period, we're going to call that what it is, which is right, camel case, F L O A T, right float. What does a right float class do? Well, under category of box, box category, we're going to get it to float to the right. Okay, so that should basically appear for my colors as far as the order, as, as far as precedence. Something floats and then it has colors, if you want to look at it that way. Okay, so we're going to make a new one. Now I can duplicate that as well. Whatever you feel is simpler. We're going to click right here and this automatically selects class tag. We're going to call this L-E-F-T, F-L-O-A-T. Because it's a class tag, I don't have to put the period in there. Because I have class selected, Dreamer will put the period for you. Okay. But you can put the period or not. It's going to not do a double period. Is that confusing? Okay. 
So class, if you select class, you don't have to put the period. It will put the period there for you. So what does left flow do? Left float simply floats to the left. Again, now, important step here. I'm not doing padding, margin. This is simply strictly a float. No padding, no margin. So pop quiz here. What do these values default to? What are these defaulting to? If you looked at my previous video in this series, this defaults to zero because the asterisk tag is set to zero. Therefore, this defaults to zero. It's a parent child relationship. Okay, so let's start formatting the rest of our tags. So let's select the nav tag. We're going to select the nav tag, select the tag, and make a rule. Select the tag and make a rule. Down here to the bottom left, select the tag, come up here to the right, and new CSS rule for that selected tag. Now, similar to how we did header, I don't have to say header inside of this i can do less specific i just want to say nav when nav is on the page now if you're going to have i just want to share with you if you have multiple navigation and some sites do they have a navigation on top for like customer login they have navigation for the site nav itself so you could choose to talk to nav when nav is inside of container tip totally personal personal preference totally up to you so let's make this less specific in this particular case Let's hit OK. OK. Now, nav, nav is going to have a height, but I want the type to vertically be in the center here. I'm going to make my line height 45 pixels. OK. I'm going, so what that's going to do, if I hit the apply option, it's going to vertically keep the type in the center. OK. Then I want to go to my box dimensions, and I'm simply going to just do left and right margin space. Margin space to the left, 10 pixels to the right, 10 pixels rather. Margin space to the right, to the, not paying attention here. Margin space to the right, 10 pixels. Margin space to the left, 10 pixels. And hit the apply option. Okay, now eventually an unordered list is going to go inside the nav tag. So this is the nav tag placeholder for search engine. So the nice thing about HTML5 tags, they're optimized for search engines. They're also optimized for mobile devices. This way it's consistency across platforms. So this nav tag, now, even though this is an HTML tag, what I would typically do here, I would start putting the nav tag in the order that it appears. So as an example, header tag is inside the main content div. So I'm gonna put that here. Now, why do we have two upper tags? That's peculiar. Okay, so I'm going to delete that other wrapper tag. I didn't realize we had that. Okay, so the, let's see here. So I have, what just happened here? So header tag, have tag, delete that by mistake. They call that something else by mistake. Why don't I have two wrapper tags here? What happened to my nav tag? This is very, oh, it's right here. I'm just not paying attention. Sorry, guys, not paying attention. So I don't need this extra wrapper tag. I'm going to delete that. My mistake. I just wasn't seeing it. Okay, so header. See, that's what happens when you turn 50. Okay, so header, nav tag is going to be the low header. Now, again, it's still going to work the same way, but I just want to come up with a consistency for my website creation. So I don't want to have different clients say, well, this client puts my nav tag on top, this on the nav tag at the bottom. So I want to assign the nav tag to background. So how do I do that? I select the tag, I select the tag, and I come down the class, and I'm going to fill it with this color here. Okay, make a change, save a change. So we're going to finish building this site in the next series of videos, so stay tuned.